Hello. Thank you very much for uh, the invitation to the Seventh Oncology Forum, the White Knights of Oncology. Oncology. My name is Jo Sung Gu. I'm a gematologist um, in the clinic affiliated to the Catholic University of Korea. So, I will speak about new medication in the treatment of mucositis. My today's presentation is uh, titled Novel Drug for the Prevention of uh, Chemoradiation uh, Induced Mucositis. Mucositis is a grave complication which very frequently uh, mm, which very frequently occurs in um, uh, patients undergoing chemotherapy or radiation therapy for cancer treatment. Severe pain, ulcerations happen, the patient cannot eat and uh, subsequently suffers from malnutrition and loss of weight. Mucositis also can be accompanied with leukopenia and subsequently it is a bad uh, risk factor for sepsis development. Oral mucositis may represent dose limiting the toxicity for different anti-tumor drugs. If you look at the clinical situation with mucositis and how frequently it occurs, this is 97% of patients of radiotherapy of cancer of the head and neck. Also in the transplantation of uh, HSCT, also there can be mucositis in meal ablative conditioning. Also, 87% of patients after autologous HCT and 40% of patients on uh, general chemotherapy can also suffer from mucositis. If you look at the current therapies for oral mucositis, then a good treatment that is available at the moment is first and foremost the use of oral care or mouth rinses. Um, saline, antiseptical treatment, local uh, anesthet anesthetics, uh, polythermine as well, which is uh, 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 K KGF. So uh, briefly about the uh, mm, impact of mucositis over uh, the pharmaceutical market. If you look at the treatment of uh, mucositis, it accounted for 1.4 billion and in 2017. We can see that it has even grown, uh, reaching 1.5 billion. Now, the global markets, pharmaceutical market, 85% are um, prescription devices and uh, KP1 is 17% the ones who require new drugs for the treatment of mucose. Now let us look at the pathophysiology of mucositis. When in the treatment of anti-tumor, uh, with anti-tumor drugs or irradiation, the different tissues in the mouth cavity are damaged, then the innate immune response is activated. In this mucose layer, there are different inflammatory cells that depose as, uh, and they result in ulcification and uh, development of bacterial infections in patients. In good control, we can cure this situation, but in um, such situation, usually patients uh, suffer from sepsis or other very bad complications. Subsequently, we need to effectively block these immune reactions. Uh, excessive uh, reactions can um, be the result of chemotherapy or uh, radiation therapy. Subsequently, uh, according to the data of the innate immune response related to mucositis, we know that a, a amphetamine uh, plays great role in the initial phase of immune response initiation when there is a release of a uh, huge amount of signal avarmin released. If you look at the, uh, at the structure of this protein, it uh, comprises three uh, domains, box A, box uh, B, and C tail. Box B has a two uh, receptor, TLR4, and HP91, uh, all C tail, uh, there is an RH binding receptor. Uh, and then a chaperone uh, is uh, box A, which, is, uh, which takes part in the transcription and reparation of the nucleus in the normal non-pathological condition. But an HMGB1 plays important role in the inflammation 
which is a cytokine mediator, when it uh, travels to cytoplasm or from the cell, HMGB1 has a huge impact over the inflammatory reactions of the immune system and regeneration outside of the cell. There are two major mechanisms by means of which HMGB1 is released uh, in the intracellular um, space, active and uh, passive release. Active, uh, this is LPS stimulus when HMGB1 is inside the nucleus, migrates to the cytoplasm and is secreted from the cell within very short period. In the passive release, any uh, cell injury, for example, anti-tumor, uh, drugs or irradiation causes uh, release from the cell and passive um, transfer into the necrotic or apoptotic phases. HMGB1 also depends on the intracell alkaline and um, acid uh, system. Subsequently, the conformation structures of HMGB1 uh, can be changed within the um, alkaline and acid stages. Uh, it is released outside of the cell, releasing cytokine stimulation via the TLR4 re receptor. This is a description of a model where a ROS system impacts uh, oxidation uh, inside the cell where the cell uh, is damaged by inflammatory uh, uh, by, by inflammation, then it is accumulated inside the cell. This ROS intra intracellular uh, brings about the uh, conformation uh, modifications in AHMGB1, which moves to the cytoplasm and then it goes outside of the cell. In other words, HMGB1 is a promising target molecule for the treatment of mucositis, and I suppose that uh, we should continue research in this area. Anti-tumor treatment can bring about ulcification as well as the inflammation in the mucus of the tongue and the intestines and enlarges expression of um, uh, HMGB1 in the cells after uh, 5-FU. In, the, uh, cell, in, the, my, in mice, you can observe ulcification if you look at the mucus of the uh, tongue after uh, 5-FU, then you will see that it, uh, HMGB1 will move into the cytoplasm and will be stained. Then it is enlarged after the in uh, increase of 5-FU, and also it's, uh, you can see also the split HMGB1 or cleaved. AAV, uh, the viral vector system, was used uh, to verify the hypothesis that um, expression of HMGB1 in the mucus is a trigger of aggravation, um, of infl inflammatory aggravation in the mucus. You can see that adena associated V9 most frequently is seen in the tongue, in the intestines. And uh, subsequently, this system produced a vector which uh, was in charge of the molecular zonding or probing by HMGB1, and it was used in the pilot uh, experiment first. If you look at the excessive expression of AAV9 and HMGB1, then you will see that HMGB1 is associated with a higher expression than the uh, AAV9. 
So that is why first they um, tested the vector system expression of AAV9. Uh, five of you was provided within five days, and then they measured the expression of HMGB1 and the inflammatory expression. In the group of five of you, you can see that the expression of HMGB1 and influcifarin is much higher than in the uh, look vector. In the group where they used uh, five of you, for the expression of HMGB1, you can see that in the dorsal and in the ventral uh, side of the tongue, the inflama inflammation of the mucus is much serious because the, even the basal layer is uh, damaged. In other words, Strategies targeting HMGB1 in the uh, mucus is first of all blocking the signal receptors and the use of neutralizing antibody in order to block the secreted HMGB1 or with the use of glycerin. Our strategy is pharmacological use of necroc uh, x -SIM, which blocks the cytoplasm translocation of HMGB1 and its secretion in the physical um, mediated, uh, it blocks the physical mediated release. Necrox 7 was initially made by LG Life Science in order to um, bring down the necrosis of uh, cells and uh, tissue. But later on, we conducted a long-term study of applying it in the uh, treatment of oral mucositis. Necroc 7 uh, stops mitochondrial uh, ROS RNS uh, scavenger, and also it blocks the HMGB1 uh, release or secretion. We can uh, show you uh, how it blocks uh, HMGB1 uh, release into cytoplasm. HMGB1. We have taken a number of monocytes of mice. If you stimulate, uh, stimulate with uh, hydrogen peroxide, then you will see uh, expression of HMGB1 in um, cytoplasm. But necrox 7. Uh, application uh, verifies that it stays within the nucleus, not moving into cytoplasm. You can also use mitochondrial trackers that uh, track the mitochondrial growth to uh, confirm that in the use of necros 7, the staining of cytoplasm is not observed. But if you do not use HMGB1, then you will see ROS accumulation in the cytoplasm uh, if you use ROS alone. In other words, HMGV1, the diagram of this type, when in any damage of the cell, mitochondrial growth is secreted and the signal pathway HMGV1 is activated. Here, the main uh, enzyme as uh, is uh, blocks phosphorylation and The same experiment was carried out not only in mice, but also in, in hamsters. To cause the um, mucus inflammation, uh, they used 5-FU and they used necros 7. If you look here, you will see the uh, pure uh, mucus in the use of 5-FU and necros 7, as if 5-FU was not introduced at all. But in the group without necros uh, 7, uh, you will see the ulcers and the infl inflammatory process ongoing. Necros 7 can significantly block the inflammation of the mu oral mu mucus, which is induced by uh, drugs and uh, tumor drugs. This is the uh, tongue, mice tongue uh, tissue, five of you in the dorsal and ventral uh, 
a drug um, brought about uh, severe ulcification, but Necrox 7 verifies that the uh, condition improves significantly with a dose of 0.3 mg, 3 mg, and 30 mg per kilo of weight. Necrox 7 can also reduce the release of uh, HMGB1 and Puma. If you look at the level of HMGB1 uh, uh, expression in the tongue, then it reduced if compared to 5-FU um, if you introduce an, uh, Necrox 7. And it does not migrate into the cytoplasm for 5-FU. You can see that the extent of P53 is very high, but in Necro 7, P53 was reduced significantly. When it comes to the level of Puma expression uh, related by P55 of you, uh, then it was significantly below. And you can also see that in the group of uh, Necro 7, the amount of uh, Cox 7. Caspase 3, excuse me, was significantly uh, higher. Necrox 7 can block nuclear translocation of NFKB. <coughs> you will see that NFKB, Kappa B, is uh, stained, but if you preliminary give Necrox 7, then even if 5FU, there is no staining. The experiments also show that the inflammatory cytokines such as TNF uh, alpha and I, uh, MIP1 beta and IL18 significantly are significantly reduced in the group with preliminary necrox 7 if compared to single use of FU, 5 FU. VGF uh, protein, which is part of the mucus regeneration, they have grown. Necro 7 is not contrary to anti-tumor effects uh, achieved in um, anti-tumor anti or radiation uh, therapy. Necro 7 doesn't give us any major difference between the control group and the Necro 7. In the control group and in 5-FU, if Necro 7 was used, then the effect of tumor uh, reduction was uh, still persistent. And in the group of uh, whole body radiation in Nex Necrox 7 group, then the tumor shrunk further. In conclusion, we can say that when a Necrox 7 is introduced into the model, then it effectively blocks mucositis and there is also it does not protect the tumor cells. So this is a conclusion summary of our and conclusion. If we use chemotherapy or radiation therapy of the tissue DNA of the mucus is uh, damaged and the growth of cells is enlarged. This is uh, something that causes about mitochondrial dysfunction and the growth is shifted to the cytoplasm and the nucleus. That is why HMGB1 demonstrates confirmed uh, uh, migration and also it causes about mitochondrial dysfunction, necrosis, and it's released outside of the cell and it actually is um, acts as an inflammatory cytokine. It also, enough Kappa B is activated, which uh, actually is um, uh, results in inflammatory cytokines release. Uh, then uh, it blocks the uh, inflammatory translocation eros and uh, blocks HMGB1 uh, into the uh, re release into the cytoplasm, uh, leasing, um, just relieving the um, HMGB1 uh, is of 
critical role in the path uh, physiology of mucositis. Reduction of its release of its release can um, improve mucositis, and targeting mucositis by means of blocking HMGB1 is a new um, approach to the treatment of mucositis, which is used as basic data for further development. Pathophysiology, the results were published in the mucosal immunology resources. The patent was registered not only in Korea, but United States, Japan, China, and Europe. Recently, in the United States, we also received FDA approval for clinical uh, trials in patients with head and neck cancers. And briefly, I can speak about polyformin, uh, polyformin which uh, was used in clinical conditions. Uh, polyformin must be introduced uh, before and after transplantation of hemopoietic cells. That is why it's uh, long-term uh, treatment. It was used in clinical practice as it was uh, demonstrated that oral mucositis is reduced in patients with stages three and four. But if you look at the significant uh, disadvantages of polyfermine, then uh, fermin, epithelial tumors, apart from transplantation of hemopoietic cells, you cannot use uh, this uh, uh, in the treatment of um, mucosal inflammations because there are side effects which are related to cataract development. Also, polyfermine uh, can. Um, uh, bring about thickening of the mucus uh, of oral cavity and different edema, uh, fever and pain. A number of other complications uh, are much higher than in the control group. So we know that polyfermin is quite expensive and uh, expensive side effects. Of late, it was not almost not used in the uh, clinical practice because of the therapeutic restrictions. Please allow me to uh, show clinical trial in a patient with NECROX-7. We received Korean FDA for clinical phase, uh, clinical trial of uh, 2A. Uh, starting from the next week, we are going to start clinical trial in patients uh, with uh, for patients with the transplantation of hemopoietic cells, multiple myelo myeloma and lymphoma. There will be NECROX-7 clinical trial. It will be applied in the new, uh, new VNT uh, protocols on merfalin therapy and so on. We shall also do an up uh, dose uh, up regulation. Uh, study and then there will be randomization into placebo group as phase as next phase as I deal with lymphoma we do uh, uh, transplantation of autologous um, uh, stem cells so this is something that we're going to include into our study that tested um, the um, in case of mephalein treatment of myeloma with um, severe mucositis, it was provided for four days. IP will be administered daily, 30 minutes or an hour before the treatment. Endpoints, safety endpoints, tox uh, toxicity endpoints, and according to the WHO severity criteria.
Thank you for your attention. If you look at the right side of this slide, this is ITRMI, uh, uh, Institution of Translational Studies as well as Academic Studies. Uh, these are photos of our researchers. You can see uh, a person who is marked uh, blue here. He is of very great importance to this trial. And you can see a panoramic view of our hospital. Thank you for your keen interest to our study. It would be absolutely great to communicate with you in person, so waiting for you in Korea.